the field. And it sort of would be not only that you would be able to help people in Armenia, but also you are able to engage our youth and to sort of come up with a system that would hopefully allow us to think about problems, think about solutions, and how we could execute those solutions in Armenia by Armenians and for the Armenian people, and also others. So uh, this is one of the biggest uh, incentives for me that, you know, to engage uh, students in Armenia and to engage institutions, which thanks to Dr. Dekulevian, thanks to Dr. Hajian and uh, Sarkis, uh, they, they were so receptive uh, of, you know, our proposed work. And, um, you know, I feel like I've known Sarkis forever. And, uh, you know, it's been a pure joy to work with him and the students, you know, Gagi, Vaha, da, uh, you know, Levon, so David. So this has been a wonderful experience for me. So. At the same time that we were having these Armenian discussions about, you know, the lack of orthopedic care in Armenia, which is uh, quite a bit, and then part of it is because implants and devices are so expensive, and Armenia is not actually large enough as a country that, you know, warrants a lot of these companies to come in and set up shop in terms of, you know, having, you know, representatives and things of that nature. It's just not a big enough business for them. And uh, so this leaves the landscape uh, a bit barren and also allows for, uh, you know, things not to develop in a proper way. And uh, what we, I mean, what I tasked myself with was that I will try to do whatever I can to rectify that situation, make it, make change for the better, and also to engage with the folks in Armenia, which, which is the students and also the orthopedic surgeons and everyone in uh, all the processes in between that we need to engage with to make things happen. So uh, along those lines, uh, while we were working, thinking about these things, uh, my colleague and I, Dr. Rodriguez, we were thinking about orthopedic care in the developing world as well, uh, himself uh, having a heritage from uh, South America, and what we can do for the developing world to have access to proper orthopedic care that they currently don't, that are basically either priced out or they're, you know, resource constrained that, you know, they will not be able to have the same care uh, as you would get in, in the United States or in the Western world. So uh, one of the biggest problems that we have, let's say, here in the United States, is like, you know, with geriatrics in trauma, you know, most of the cases when you look at the community, they're mostly geriatric uh, folks, older folks that, you know, fall and break a hip or um, things of that nature. So the hip is your largest bone in your body, the femur, and it's it's a significant load-bearing bone. So most, uh, you know, uh, as you can imagine, you stand, you walk, everything is done by transfer of load through your uh, femur, down to your tibia and to the ground. So when it breaks, it's a, it's a catastrophic event. And... Uh, uh, with the best of care in the United States, uh, people that break their hip and they end up with a total hip surgery, uh, with best of care and everything, up to 25 to 30% of them die within a year after surgery because they're mostly older folks. This is a massive trauma to the body. And even with good care, it's still a significant trauma to overcome. So uh, and, uh, in the situation in Armenia is significantly worse, I can tell you that. And that's what really bothered me to think of that, you know, our, you know, mommies and daddies, you know, that would be, you know, uh, suffering and will not have the proper way to be cared for. And um, so uh, and that's how the idea of this short nail came about. It's a very, very common um, orthopedic implant that is used uh, here. Um, you make a it's a relatively small surgery. It takes less than an hour to do a surgery, and you go from a broken hip to be able to put load on it and back, go back to normal life. So this is a uh, so this is not a total hip surgery. Just so you know, this is basically you put your bones back together so that you can function again. And it's you know because your femoral head is intact, your femoral neck is well, body might be broken, but everything is there. There's you know you can sort of bring everything together secure them together, and then allow the patient, the patient to, to bear load. So this is uh, where sort of the incentive came up. And if you look at these, you know, there's a number of companies that make these, you know, short nails in the United States and also in Europe. And they're, you know, they're rather complicated, complex cases and complicated, complex sets and uh, have many, many parts in them. And they're very expensive. You use some of them, and then you have to restock them, and you restylize them, and you have a representative from the company that's always available at each hospital. So there's a significant amount of overhead that's associated with this process that, quite frankly, does not add much uh, to the overall care. And so we uh, started thinking about how we could do this process and how we can simplify that. And uh, given you know Dr. Rodriguez's experience with it as a surgeon for like 10, 15 years, 
he had noticed that basically of all these different sizes and variations and everything that comes with these kits, he basically ends up using a few options for about 90% of the time. So, and this is in the United States, but you know, anatomic variation is significantly larger than uh, places that are much more homogeneous, such as Armenia, which you know, pretty much the rest of the world tends to fall in this category. You know, most people are, uh, you know, in the smaller countries. You know, they're like, you know, ethnically uh, similar, and there's you know, not a lot of size variation as you would see in a place such as America. And um, so, we ended up, uh, we started to think about how we could change this process and came up with a solution to sort of use innovation, not necessarily in a way that you normally associate innovation with, is uh, like some new and, you know, you know, sort of large idea, but to take what's available and make it much more user-friendly and be just as good, but also make it so that you could use it in a, uh, in a limited and resource-constrained setting. And that's where the, con the innovation component came here, and that's what we wanted to, uh, to emphasize. So we went from uh, a kit that basically has two trays, and I'm sure Lemon will show you some information before uh, after at some point, and uh, which like you know 60, 70 pieces in that kit to something that we could conduct this operation with less than 10 pieces in the kit. So that uh, was a uh, sort of you know using a lot of you know sort of interchangeable parts, using a lot of parts that will carry on more than one um, task, and be able to allow the surgeon to do this work relatively easily and also uh, basically bring the price down so that you have a system that is cost effective, is effective, and also can uh, therefore can be used uh, by a large number of orthopedic surgeons for a large number of patients. If you look at like, the patient volume in Armenia and orthopedic care, it's what really is uh, sad for me is that you know the number of cases of different, you know, those big surgeries that happen in Armenia are pretty much on par with what happens in my hospital for a whole year. You know, I understand it is a much smaller country, but the bottom line is care is not given simply because it's, you know, not that the doctors are not uh, good, simply because it's out of most people's price range and it's difficult for them to get proper care. And that's, uh, to me, that's a tragedy and that's something that we must and should do something about. So um, that came to the idea and I talked to Aram and he was kind enough to put me in touch with Sarkis. And then we started working on this uh, project with a, a number of students over the past couple of years. And now we have come to uh, work with Levon who actually did quite a bit of work and he continues to do work on this as part of his capstone project to sort of create the initial design that we had, go through a series of optimizations and modifications, and then actually make some of these parts in Armenia, and then uh, conduct some testing on them and do some finite element analysis, uh, basically to satisfy the uh, ASTM guidelines which govern all of these parts that you have to sort of make and uh, produce in America. So our goal is to <coughs> design a system that would withstand the same uh, regulatory rigor that would have in the United States and basically would be good enough to use in any Western country uh, to be used by in Armenia and also other developing nations. So our goal is not to cut corners, our goal is not to reduce quality for the sake of price, but rather be smart enough about what we can do and how we change the processes and the design so that allow us to be cost effective yet be effective and also fulfill all regulatory uh, sort of benchmarks that need to be done. So this, uh, to me, this is a, uh, a wonderful component and, and this is where actually Ed comes in and uh, as part of a multidisciplinary team because anything that I do in my projects, regardless of what project I work on, I always have a team associated with it and there's a number of people with a wide array of expertise that are needed for each project and I'm thankful for all of them that we pull together and we'll work together. And here, you know, we have um, Sarkis's expertise from an industrial engineering perspective and uh, me from a biomechanics perspective. However, I have no knowledge of how things work in an orthopedic company or any kind, any kind of a, you know, device company when you take the idea and you turn it into a product that you can put in people. And that's where Ed came in and given his expertise and background and currently working as a development engineer for a, uh, biomedical field in Armenia was allowing us to take this idea and make it make sure that it turns into something that you can actually use in patients. 
So um, the regulatory processes are important, and by the way, they are minimal in Armenia because there's not a, uh, unfortunately, large uh, segment that you know is developing any kind of devices for uh, for biomedical use. So as we go through this process, this is truly a learning experience. Not only do we have to design and optimize the system, uh, go through all the rigors of regulatory testing, but we also have to establish this system in Armenia and give this and have this be accepted by by the government in Armenia, by the orthopedic surgeons in Armenia, and by the population. Because um, if somebody has the need, they will just say, you know what, forget about it. I'll just buy a German product or whatever that comes from Europe or I will use that for my surgery. Our goal is to truly also change that mindset that what you make in Armenia can be just as good as any other product from anywhere else in the world. And with that comes a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication and also the ability to change people's minds so that things that we make in Armenia are of high quality and are done properly. And that goes, you know, through the process of, you know, following standards and rigors that, use, that are used in the West, Western world. Uh, it's, uh, it falls on the shoulders of all of you, our students, uh, that, you know, you guys are bright and wonderful students. And truly one of the biggest joys for me is to come to AUA or go to any university in Armenia and spend time with our students. It's, I, I'm not just giving you a cheap compliment, but it truly brightens my day every time I get to do that. And it invigorates me into like, you know, you know, we have a bright future because of you guys. And, uh, and I think it's, it's upon us to not only design a good product, but also show to our people that this is a wonderful product that is usable. And I will be happy to use that uh, should any of my family members need this kind of surgery. So I think this is one of the other important parts of it. And the other part is that, you know, it falls outside of the expertise of all of us that we are in this group, which is the sort of the business components, the development component. You might have a great product, but if you don't have the means and the ability to show this and to come up with the proper business plan, to come up with the proper marketing plan, you're dead on arrival. So this is uh, why the multidisciplinary approach is really, really essential to our success. And those are the areas that we need to be working on to get this product that we have right now from the paper and testing into an actual product that can be tested and marketed and used in Armenia and hopefully other similar countries. So um, that.